Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be talking about something that's only going to be of interest to you if you are looking for a high quality set of knives that is not going to break the bank in terms of cost. I've been looking for a set like this for a long time. I've had my share of knife fails where I bought something that seemed really great and then they literally fell apart in my hands. Fortunately, I still have all my fingers after that experience. Well, I came across three different sets of knives and they are exactly what you're looking for. If you're like me and you just, you just want something that's quality, you don't want to pay for some kind of like expensive brand name where you're just paying for the name. You don't want to pay for something that has like a gimmicky back marketing story, you know, like the legend behind the knives or whatever. You just want high quality knives that keep a nice sharp edge, don't fall apart in your hands, and are made by a company that seems to stand behind the quality of their products. If you're looking for that, this is exactly the video that you've been looking for. And if you're not, you have absolutely no reason to watch it. The first set of knives that I owned when I kind of moved out on my own was something I probably paid about $30 for. Plastic handles, uh, the metal uh, didn't even have a full tang that went into the blade. I remember trying to cut with things and the metal was just kind of falling out of the plastic after a couple of years. After going through that and all my knives eventually falling apart, I thought, uh, you know, at this point I just want to buy some knives and they'll just be my forever knives. I don't mind spending a little bit of money on it if I'm going to be buying quality. And I went around kind of shopping, looking for something that was going to, you know, be that, that set for me. Something that was quality. I, don't, I didn't mind paying, you know, maybe like a hundred bucks or maybe a little bit more, but something where I just buy it once and then I'm good with it. Uh, that is something I think is oftentimes lacking in the consumer market where people you know, very infrequently are looking for quality. There are people that are looking for luxury things that where they want to buy a lot, where it's like, it's got a gilded handle, you know, inlaid with gold and there's like, you know, mother of pearl in there. There's people that want that kind of like luxury, like flashy bling kind of stuff. And then there are people that would just want like, just give me the absolute cheapest thing, you know, whatever's the lowest price, that's what I'm going to go for. That kind of middle area where, you know, you're willing to spend some money, but you don't want to be spending money on like, you know, mother of pearl handles. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to be buying junk. That kind of middle ground, it's kind of hard to to navigate because, uh, well, I, in the same way that the middle class here in America has been kind of hollowed out, you just got these two polarized ends where, you know, one group of people just want, you know, whatever's the absolute cheapest and I, you know, I'm going to get tired of it anyway and I'm going to want to throw it out. In fact, I was just driving down the road the other day and I saw a big billboard with a broken cell phone on it. It said, broken is beautiful. Uh, and the idea is it's some kind of program where like if you break your cell phone, they'll keep getting a new one. And people love that idea because, you know, they don't want the cell phone, the cell phone that they're passed down to their great grandkids. You know, people want to just, you know, constantly throw out the old thing, you know, get the new one, throw out the old one, get the new one. Um, um, you know, and then if you decide that you want to like spend a lot of money on something, you don't usually get something where you're buying extra quality. Like I mentioned, you're getting like gilded uh, edges or, you know, mother of pearl inlay or, you know, all these kind of things that where you're not actually getting extra quality, you're just spending extra money. It's really hard to just find that kind of sweet middle. I thought I found it. I'm not going to name these knives. I don't want to throw them under the bus, but I thought I found it with these knives here. Uh, this was a set of knives that I, I got. I think I spent about a hundred dollars on like, you know, a set about like this. And these are the, these are the nice ones here that I'm going to talk about in this video. I think I spent about a hundred bucks on them. And you know, just after a little while, uh, the, the, the blades, they literally started falling apart in my hands. I, I think this one, I was cutting some, I was cutting the cheese, uh, with, with this one. And it just, you know, snapped right apart in my hands. Uh, I forget. I think I was just doing bread with this, uh, this knife here. And it just broke right at the, Base here, here uh, you know, I spent a fair bit of money and you know, the tang goes all the way through the handle, but it's just, it's sub -qual, uh, subpar quality materials. And I'm gonna get these out of my way so I don't cut myself during this video. Again, I'm not gonna mention what company this was. I made a video on it if you wanna look through my archive. Um, but you know, I thought I was getting something of quality, but it was just garbage. So uh, another company, saw that video that I made and they said, hey, you know what? You might be interested in trying our products. And you know, when I usually get approached from companies, I'm kind of like, okay, send it over. I'm gonna make the lousy video review and then I'll never hear from you again. Cause that's the way it usually is. Uh, you know, if you're honest in your reviews on a channel, you'll get one product from a company. You'll say what you think about it and you never hear from them again. So I thought this was just gonna be another one of those things like, oh yeah, I'll try your stuff and I'll do my honest review and it's not gonna be hundred percent positive and glowing. So, uh, you know, <laughs> that'll be the end of it. Well, I was let down because 
the, what they sent me is actually really, really good stuff. If you are looking for high quality knives, just the, the knife set that you're just gonna buy, and it's, you're good for the, the rest of your life. And you know, I can't say from personal experience, but maybe it's the kind of thing that you can even pass down to your kids and your grandkids. They've seen really, really high quality. Now, this is one company that has three different uh, brand names. So uh, well, I'm gonna be talking about uh, these three different brand names. One, which is uh, Piccolo Haas, the other is Shiokami, and the other one is Cocos Aid. They're all made by the same company, and these are just sort of different flavored brand names that they have. Uh, you know, that they release things through. And I'm gonna talk about all of them. And again, this is not gonna be that exciting of a video unless you're looking for some good knife sets. And in fact, if you wanna skip the whole video, let me just tell you right off the bat, spoiler alert, they're all really, really good products. I'm gonna put links down in the description below if you wanna get any of this stuff. Um, and I guess in the rest of the video, I'll just kinda of show you what was sent to me uh, and I'll talk about why I, you know, I'm so uh, positive about it. The first thing that they sent me was this uh, bread cutting knife. I used it as a, uh, a tool in a review about a, a bread cutting machine that they had. And I was really impressed by it. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just a great uh, bread cutting knife. Uh, it's got a serration uh, down the side of it here, uh, which makes it a little bit more difficult to sharpen. Because for that reason, I tend to like to stay away from serrated uh, blades, but uh, I mean, it does a really, really great job. And it's not that kind of super sharp serration that's really difficult to sharpen yourself later. This is one that you could manage sharpening yourself if you had a little bit of patience. Really, really excellent bread cutting knife. Really big bread cutting knife. It looks like, you know, I don't know if you, I don't even know if you could buy this in the UK. This is probably one of those like assault knives or something like that. So you know, really, really nice uh, bread cutting knife. After uh, you know, I I was really uh, positive on that. They said, hey, we'll we'll send you a couple uh, more of our sets, and uh, these are the three sets that I'm going to go through. This is their Piccolo Haas kind of uh, you know basic kitchen knife set. I'm going to go through that a little bit. This is this is why. I, I, I don't know why I'm so fond of this one, but this is like kind of, this is your Shiokami. Uh, it's kind of like a Japanese inspired design. By the way, I should mention off uh, right from the beginning, this, these are all made in China. And I, I know a lot of people oftentimes have negative uh, views on things made in China. And I think that's really, really unmerited. Uh, the, the idea that China makes a lot of cheap stuff is only because that's what a lot of the market here in the United States wants. We just want the cheapest possible quality product. You look at the, the Great Wall of China. Yeah, you, know, you think of those iconic uh, you know, stone structures spanning over the hills. That's the high quality part of the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China you know, spans you know, for is it hundreds or thousands of miles. It's a really, really long wall. Not all of it is like that beautiful part. The beautiful part was in an area where there was a demand for high quality. So, you know, the people that were building it built a real, high, really high quality, beautiful wall. But then you get out further out into the West where the, you know, people didn't really want a, like a high quality, beautiful wall. And there's just like rubble piles and things like that. The Great Wall of China is a great example of what China is able to do. If people want something really great and one beautiful, they can create that. And if people just want a pile of rocks to keep the, you know, the Mongols from coming through, they can do that as well. And that's why I think a lot of the, you know, the products that are sent here from China are low quality is because that's what Americans generally want. We want the lowest quality, cheapest kind of crap because we plan on throwing it out later because broken is beautiful, right? Um, so all this stuff is made in China, uh, but you know, some of these things, this, uh, this set here is, it says that it's designed in Germany on the, uh, the little brochure here. And this says that it's designed in Japan. I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, I think it's just a marketing kind of thing and I don't fault them for that. I mean, if the quality of products is there, the quality of products is there. I don't know if this means that like, you know, one of their designers flew to an airport in Germany and like kind of like took a piece of paper and pencil out and kind of designed this while they were in the, like the, uh, the airport in Germany and then flew back to China to put it together. And, you know, ditto for Japan. They just like flew into Tokyo for like a, a, a 30 minute layover and then uh, designed this nice, nice set. But I don't know, I'm joking about it, but you know, what's really important is, is the quality there and the quality is here. I really like this set here. I, I think I'm just sort of like uh, sold on like the whole uh, fact that it's like this portable set. So I, I'm just kind of partial to this set, but uh, you know, they're all really nice. So uh, there's the Piccolo House set, the Shiokami set, and then there's a small set, uh, which I noticed there was kind of a hole in uh, their offerings here. And I said, you know, you guys uh, don't seem to have any kind of like a small paring knife. A lot of them use paring knives for, uh, you know, slicing cheese for, you know, like cheese and crackers or something like that. And they said, oh no, we actually have that. It's from our uh, Cocos Aid brand. I'm not sure what the, you know, Shokami kind of sounds Japanese, Piccolo Haas, 
So that kind of sounds sort of German. Cocos aid. The only thing that kind of reminds me of is like the coqui frog from Puerto Rico. I don't know. It's like supposed to be like a Puerto Rican uh, inspired design or something like that. But uh, that is this set, which is just a couple small knives. Uh, and this is the paring knife, which uh, it's just it's so rugged and keeps just a, such a sharp edge. It's just it's a great paring knife. This is like my for, forever paring knife. Uh, and it, it ships with this knife, which is kind of it's a little bit of a weird knife. I mean, I'm, I'm not faulting it because I mean, it, it, it does what it tries to do. It's like this kind of eagle beak uh, design. I, I think he kind of used it for like uh, decorative uh, sculpting in fruit. But when I opened it up, the, the only thing I could think of is this like, it's some kind of like, like an attack knife. <laughs> I mean, this looks like something like, like if you were like a video game ca character and like the, you'd have the loading screen and you'd have this knife and he'd be like, like a little animation loop. I don't know. This thing just seems like a seems like a weapon a little bit. Uh, but I guess it can be a weapon against fruit for cutting intricate designs. The one th I'm not going to talk about the packaging of any of this stuff because just you know it's packaging is fine. But uh, the Cocosade set. I, I do want to talk about the packaging because I really like the way that they uh, did this, and I want to encourage more companies uh, to do this. Is that it? It's not a bunch of styrofoam in here. It's uh, it's all biodegradable. Uh, cardboard uh, where these things nested right into this cardboard holder. I really like that. I want to encourage that with other companies. I love the idea that there's very little waste. Now, the, the knives did come in little plas uh, plastic bag sheaths, but the amount of uh, plastic packaging related to this set was so much less than the other sets or, you know, any other sets, generally speaking. I really love this kind of packaging and I'd encourage more of this. Uh, you know, it just makes the world a much nicer place if we have biodegradable stuff, which I can use in my wood stove actually to uh, to heat my home. Uh, I guess you could burn plastic too, but I'm not going to do that. So uh, that, that's all I'm going to talk about on the packaging. Now I'm going to want to go into the sets individually a little bit. I talked about the Cocos Aid set. I feel like I'm done on that. Just great quality, small paring knife set. I talked about their bread cutting knife. Uh, that That's like a solo knife that gets sold on its own. And now I'd like to talk about uh, these two larger sets. I'm going to start with this one here because it is just kind of the, the basic kitchen knife set. Uh, this is the Piccolo Haas brand. Uh, and there is one thing about this set that I'm not really all that fond of, and that is actually the, the design on the handles. <laughs> now, uh, they make sets that don't have this type of handle design, and, and it's just an aesthetic thing. It's just me personally. Um, the, the red and white marbling on the, the handles, you know, it's kind of striking. It's kind of dynamic, but it also just sort of looks like the handles are made out of raw meat. And, you know, here at the house, we kind of refer to these as uh, the raw meat handled knives. Uh, but yeah, handles aside, and, and they, they do have uh, plenty of offerings that uh, you know, don't have the raw meat. Maybe they sent me this one because, uh, I don't know, maybe they're not selling a lot of the raw meat handles. So they're like, hey, you can, you can try out these because they're not selling so great. But, um, you know, the knives themselves, really, really excellent. This comes with, uh, I believe, uh, six steak knives, uh, which, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't actually eat a lot of steak, so I haven't tried those on, uh, uh, on steak, but all the other knives in terms of what they're uh, intended for, you know, really great, really sharp edges on the basic utility knives. Uh, this uh, block here is magnetic, as you can imagine. Uh, it's not just uh, st stickers or tape on the side. Uh, and that's kind of a nice way of doing it. I think it is sort of a compact design that you can put this up against the wall in your kitchen. Uh, one, one issue that I have is that the magnets, I feel, I feel like I'd like them to be a little bit stronger. On a couple of occasions, I've put knives up here and they've started to rotate a little bit. I feel like if they put little pegs on the side to kind of catch the knife, that would be maybe a benefit on here. But I, I, I'm kind of nitpicking uh, at this point. If you take the knife like a normal human being and you treat it with respect and you carefully put it on the side there instead of like like flinging it haphazardly there, it's going to work out uh, totally fine. And it is kind of nice that they have a magnetic bar on there uh, because it allows for kind of a, uh, a compact uh, use of space. They do have extra slots in here so that if you have other knives pre-existing, you can put other knives in there. It comes with a sharpener and it comes with a really nice pair of um, uh, kitchen shears also, uh, which are I mean, of all the kitchen shears I've had, I think these are definitely the nicest kitchen shears that I've, I've ever used. Uh, so it's a really, really nice set. Um, aside from the handles, I think the only thing I don't uh, care for about the block itself is that for me personally, it's a little bit on the large side. I, 
that's just a, again, kind of a personal preference and I have sort of a small kitchen. Um, but uh, in terms of packing this many knives into a small area, I think it works pretty well. And if you compare it to other knife block sets, the footprint is nice and narrow. What I've taken uh, to in the past is I'll buy kind of a standard knife block set. And because I don't want to sacrifice counter space, I'll usually take that a knife block set and I'll mount it up onto the wall. So it doesn't even take up any counter space at all. This wouldn't really work for that so well if you wanted to use the magnets on the side, because then it would kind of, uh, yeah, they, they, well, I guess you could maybe put them this way or, yeah, I'm not sure about that. But, uh, you know, the, the, the block itself is a little on the big side for me. And uh, th there is a little bit of um, uh, manufacturing irregularities in the block itself. Uh, you know, some of the stain in the wood doesn't quite uh, hit all the edges. I don't know if that's just my particular block or if that's something with a lot of them that are, get made. But for me, honestly, I don't really care about the block at all because all these knives are just going to go into my, you know, uh, onto my magnetic panels that I already have in the kitchen anyway. It's all about the knives for me. And the knives, they're wonderful. Uh, I mean, they hold a super, a super sharp edge. Uh, I, I haven't had any of them snap in half of my hands. And I've been testing these for a while. I, I, I didn't want to like, you know, just test them for a week and then be like, okay, yeah, they're good. I'm going to do a video on it. I've been testing them for a while and they're really holding up. Excellent, really, really nice uh, knife set. I think my favorite uh, is this one here. I always forget the name of this type of knife. These are called, they have kind of a cool name a uh, Sentoku knife. I think this is kind of my favorite style of knife when I'm uh, chopping vegetables in the kitchen, as you can tell by my uh, Sentoku knife from the previous set, which snapped in half. This is a bit of a smaller one. Uh, this is a bit of a bigger one, but I tend to use this knife an awful lot in the kitchen and uh, very, very happy with it. The way that it all kind of tapers uh, into the handle and everything. Super, super happy with that. So excellent set. If you're looking for a whole uh, kitchen knife set, this is, excellent one to go with. Now I want to talk a little bit about this uh, Japanese style, the uh, um, Shokami set here. Uh, and I, I mentioned I'm kind of par partial to this. I think it's just because I, I love the kind of the fabric uh, container for it, uh, which once I pull all these out of the fabric container, it's not going to really make much of a difference. I also like the uh, the handles on these knives are really, really beautiful. That is one of the things that drew me to this other set. They had beautiful uh, wooden handles uh, that didn't say anything for the quality of the metal uh, blade inside. But I really love uh, the beauty of the handles of my broken set, uh, which I don't trust anymore. And uh, this set of knives has similar, really, really attractive handles. They feel nice in your hands. Uh, when your hands are a little bit wet, I feel hand, wet hands on plastic isn't quite as secure as wet hands on uh, a wooden handle. That's just kind of a personal preference of mine. Uh, but I really, really like this set. I'm just gonna, you know, you can kind of see all the knives in, the, in this set, but I'm gonna pull each of these out. This is like a, a basic chef's knife here. Each of them has this little uh, sheath that they slide into so that they're not tearing up the fabric here. Um, got a uh, longer uh, chopping knife that goes with it. And, there's a serrated knife, uh, very similar to this one here in terms of it being a type of serration that's not a big deal to sharpen. Uh, you could get a radius file and sharpen that up uh, pretty reasonably with a little bit of patience. And then there's my Santoku knife. I kind of prefer this one over this one. I, I sort of like the smaller size uh, uh, Santoku knives. Uh, again, that's just a personal preference. Um, that's just a personal preference. I, I, I just kind of tend to like the smaller ones. And uh, in this one is, it's it's really light, but they're very strong also. I mean, and, and I've been really, I've been trying to break this set, the, you, know, you know, really kind of pushing down through things. And uh, I mean, no knife should break just by pushing down through it, but uh, many do. Uh, we also got this, I, I'm not familiar with uh, this. I, I think this is the kind of knife that you would use for kind of going into a carcass and, uh, cutting things up, got kind of a, uh, a thinner profile. Again, holds a really nice nice edge. And there's one last knife in here, and it's just a regular kind of kitchen chopping knife. And that's it. I'm really, really happy uh, with these uh, knife sets. I'm glad that I bought these junky ones so that I was able to make a video <laughs> so that this company uh, would see the video and uh, they would recommend their knives to me because uh, by going through the portal, uh, the gauntlet, maybe I'll, I'll call it, of having this kind of cheaper quality, uh, cheaper quality, not cheaper uh, in terms of price, these cost 
about the same uh, uh, price as these other knives, just the quality isn't there. Uh, by buying these lower quality knives, it uh, offered me the opportunity to uh, get, you know, be presented with these knives. And now, after having seen this video, you can learn what I learned, except without having to buy the junky quality knife set first. So I hope you found this video helpful. I think it's really important, uh, you know, just in your your regular day-to-day -day, uh, you know, going about of your life to think about things in terms of their long-term costs. So many times people uh, think so short-term in terms of, you know, what, what, what's the cheapest thing that I can buy for right now? And then if it only lasts you a couple of years, then you buy it again, and then uh, again, and again, and again. And, you know, after a decade, uh, or even less, you know, sometimes you've paid like double, triple, quadruple the price that you would have paid if you had just bought the higher quality product from the beginning and then it would have just lasted your whole life. And uh, as you do this in your life and you start replacing out junky stuff with things that are meant to last, it creates a cost savings in your life generally because you're not constantly on this treadmill of having, uh, having to constantly replace things. And by getting yourself to that place, it makes it so that instead of you bleeding money, constantly having to replace things, you can save that money up and then it makes it easier and easier for you in the future to have a little bit of extra money to buy that extra quality product, which again, will just snowball and last you, you know, much longer or possibly forever, and which will save you even more money for the future to, you know, to continue with that practice. So whether it's kitchen knives or whatever in your life, really think about the long-term, uh, uh, the long-term costs of things and uh, don't don't ex exclusively look at you know what's going to be the cheapest thing this week but think about you know over the next couple of years what is going to be the most cost effective and you know satisfying way to go through uh, you know working because you know it's not just frustrating to be you know working with a product and having it break it can also be kind of dangerous i'm lucky i didn't cut myself when these things broke if you have like a junky cell phone or a gps device you know what is that going to be uh, you know costing you you know you're out somewhere and suddenly your phone just dies and you know, you're depending on it uh, you know being there for you or you're trying to coordinate with people suddenly you can't communicate with them you know you're you're out looking for an address and your gps goes down I, it's from personal experience these are things that tend to to break a lot you know and you know suddenly you know you can't uh, you know get where you're going you know if you're like me you got paper maps and you're going to be fine anyway but it's not just the the fact you have to keep buying these things but every time something goes down it creates an inconvenience in your life and that inconvenience uh you know is a is a cost to you as well so that's it i hope you found this video helpful if you're looking for knives, links down in the description below to all three of these sets. And I'm probably going to be doing more with this company because I've been kind of talking with them about uh, maybe developing some other products. Because uh, when you find a company that's really interested in you know, creating a quality product that is of a high value for the customer is not just the absolute cheapest thing out of the gate, but they're really valuing giving people something that is going to last and not let people down. You know, they're working on building up their reputation as a company that makes stuff that you can trust and you can depend upon. And as someone who's into prepping and preparedness, being able to depend on your tools, you can't really put a price on that. That's it, and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.